the first thing you're going to want to do is go to your blogger and make sure that you've got at least one post published in your blog. So you click on view blog, new post, and just type something in. I'm doing a test post here just to show what's actually going to show up and how it's going to look in Weebly. So you just type in something and you can choose to add a label to it. That's not really that important. One nice feature is that you can schedule a blog so you can choose to have it come up at a different time but for now we're just going to do an automatic one. Click publish and you'll wait for the little spinning wheel to finish spinning and you can close that and now you can click on view blog and you should see your test post there. What you're going to want to do is copy the URL, the address of that and open up feedburner.com that's going to publish your blog feed. The nice thing about FeedBurner is that it's completely tied in with your blogger account. So you just have to sign in to your Google account. Make sure you choose the right password. And sign in there. Wait for that to load up. And it'll ask you to burn a feed. You paste your blog URL in there. Click Next and you can just choose the default there it's fine click on next let it go through now it's going to give you an option for the feed address it's not that important here because nobody's going to actually see it so click on next again and feed burner will go through and now that your feed burner is live you can right click on that or context click and copy the link address and now you're going to want to go to a website called feedroll.com this is what's going to translate your blog feed into something that looks good on your Weebly site. So you click on Feed RSS Viewer. In the little box here, you paste your URL. And make sure there's no extra spaces or anything. And then go through the options here. It's going to ask you if you want to show the channel, so the title and all those details. For my purposes, I click No. The number of items to display is important. Zero is the default and that will show everything. I just want my students to see the one latest post. Uh, you want it to show the full item description. So that's already the default option. Show item author. No, that's not important. Use HTML in the display is important if you're going to be embedding things like videos or Google Forms. So you want to switch that to yes go through the rest of these options. You may want to choose target links in a new window to yes so that if students click on a link in one of your blog posts they'll they'll still have a tab open with your your website. Click on preview feed and you should see the content of your test post right there. And then click on generate JavaScript. Scroll down and where it says get your code here highlight the whole thing and copy it to your clipboard. Now go to your Weebly site, click on Pages, add a new page, and this is just going to be a standard page. So give it a name, and you can choose whichever page layout you want. Usually I do it with no header. Save and edit, and then you want to find on the left hand side the embed code. It's scrolled down a little bit, and you find it right there, embed code, drag it over and wait for that to pop up and when, when it says click here to set custom HTML you paste in that embed code and click outside of the window somewhere and you should see your one recent post show up. The really nice thing is that it follows all the same rules, all the same formatting, uses the same font, style and everything as your Weebly site. So then you just have to publish the web page and you're done. Now anytime you post a new blog post, it'll automatically show up in Weebly.